Hi, welcome back to our channel. In this video, I'm going to uh, break down this kind of animation. So this is using a technique that I call path animation, where we will animate the path of the shape layers in After Effects. So I did not do the animation for this one. I did not design the character. The character was designed by Meg and the animation was done by Anna. But since my teammates are uh, too shy to be in front of a camera, so I'm explaining the process in their stead. So I still consider this as a frame-by-frame -frame workflow where we started the animation frame-by-frame -frame in Adobe Animate and then we just used After Effects to do the cleanup. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the design. I'm going to discuss the reference we looked for and the animation process starting from the roughs to the tie downs and then finally using After Effects and the path animation technique to do the cleanup. And I'm also going to discuss the pros and cons of uh, using this technique. Um, and just a disclaimer, this tutorial is not for beginners. This is an advanced technique. So if you are an animator who already has experience animating frame by frame and animating in After Effects, then this tutorial is for you. But even if you're still a beginner and you want to watch the video, you can still do so. Uh, I'll mostly explain like the overview process. So any skill level would still be able to get something uh, out of this uh, video. So even if you're not going to use the path animation technique, um, hopefully by listening to how I explain, hopefully you'll get idea from our process that you could incorporate in your own process. So uh, let's, let's start. So as I have mentioned earlier, I did not do the design, I did not animate, my role is a creative director. So um, in this project, uh, I gave like direction to uh, Meg and Anna. I gave uh, feedback. So that's what I'm going to discuss uh, right now. I I'm not going to discuss the design process, but I'm going to discuss my thought process on like the progression of uh, their work. So I'm also gonna uh, discuss why I gave uh, those specific feedback and what was the result. So let's start first with the design. The design was made by Meg and I'm gonna show you uh, the initial designs. So this is the first uh, design that Meg uh, has sent. And uh, normally uh, Meg would give me like uh, three to four different explorations. But for this one, at uh, the moment I saw this design, I told Meg to, to stop other, uh, don't continue with the other exploration because I already have chosen uh, this design because I think the design is already dynamic enough for the uh, runway front walk cycle and uh, the clothing is already like uh, fashionable enough. So I, I told Meg to, um, just uh, focus on de developing this further. But of course, I still have like a few comments and I'm going to get into that uh, now. So uh, the design became like this. And my primary comment to this is that while the pose is already dynamic, it looks dynamic, it still feels a bit flat. Um, because if you look at our uh, the body or the chest, it's not entirely flat. It's not like straight down. It's more of like going something like this, right? So it's like, it's not flat like this, but it has that like forward direction for the body. And this initial design, this here, it feels like it's flat. I'm, I'm not even talking about uh, the the breast because I think um, the breast has like 
volume already, but the chest, this one, doesn't have that like forward uh, feel. It feels flat. And also you could think of the body as a cube, right? So uh, like the, this, the chest has a front plane. It also has the side plane um, right here, right? And for this initial design, I just couldn't, see it. It, it that's why i felt that a bit flat it felt 2d so this one is now like the the final um finished design it's still not cleaned up but um overall this is what i'm already looking for uh the chest here feels like it's like have that forward motion and now i could like see like the the side plane whereas with uh, the initial design, I couldn't like see like the side. So that's one check that you could do. If you want to check if your drawing feels flat or does it have volume, um, see if there's a front plane or and a side plane to your um, drawing. If you can't see or if, if you if it doesn't have like three planes, then it would feel a bit flat. So this one's already good, but it's not cleaned up. If I'm gonna zoom in, see we still have like some holes in here. So what Meg did is she did the initial sketch, even like um, the the correcting the or implementing my my changes. But she did the uh, the final one in Adobe Illustrator. And you might ask, um, when do I use Photoshop? When do I use Adobe Illustrator? The answer is. It really depends on your preference. So both of these software are very capable to do the sketch and also to do the, the cleanup. But in this uh, example, um, I think uh, the reason why we started with uh, Photoshop is it's because the brush, it's much more free flowing. It's much more natural to draw on. But when doing the cleanup for those um, exact curves, that it looks like more a vector illustration, then Illustrator it ha is like better or easier to, to do that because v Illustrator is a vector um, program. So this is now the final illustration. So if I zoom in, you will see that it's very like crisp. It's super HD, right? Because it's vector and we have here like different color options and I I couldn't really like decide. So I I, I forgot like which one we started with, but if you uh, saw our Instagram post, we actually used like all of the uh, colors because I couldn't just uh, pick one. So the next step is not to go directly to animating, but the next step is to look for uh, references. And for this animation, the animation is a uh, front walk cycle. So that's really like difficult. Uh, we know walk cycle, walk cycle is uh, a bit simpler, right? But usually when we animate walk cycle, that's um, side view or tree forts. And rarely we animate a front walk cycle. So we need to look for, for reference. So um, a front walk cycle is already difficult as it is. And mix that with a runway walk cycle, which is kind of like different. So we really need to look for references. And for this one, we have uh, two main reference. The first one really just act as a reference just to um, look at how um, the runway walk cycle looks. And uh, the second reference is actually a tutorial. And I'm going to, to show you. So this is our first reference and it's by uh, Beauty Pageants. The, the account is Beauty Pageants. So I'm just gonna like play this and I'm just gonna, gonna skip. And this has like a different uh, styles. So in a like uh, a ramp walk, there's a different style to it. And we have uh, used this. We look at this and try to like figure out what we want for for our video. And the second one is uh, by Crystal Clues, and this is more of a tutorial teaching like how to do like the walk, like a step by step um, process on how to do a runway walk. 
So here, uh, when we wanted to animate a runway walk cycle, we did not look for tutorials on how to animate a runway walk cycle, but instead we looked for a tutorial on how to walk in a runway. So um, if ever you want to animate something, don't look for a tutorial on how to animate that action, but instead try to learn that action itself. Try to look for tutorials on that specific action. So for example, um, you want to animate a baseball pitch. So don't look for tutorials how to animate a baseball pitch. Instead, look for a tutorial on how to do the baseball pitch. So my key takeaway from uh, the tutorial uh, is that when we walk, we could think like there's a straight line. And normally when we walk, we have like um, one foot here and uh, the other foot here. So when we walk, um, we stay on like the, uh, on the, the lane. And like a runway walk is that you imagine that you're walking on this straight line. So you walk in like this way. And if you want to exaggerate, you could like cross over. So like this, for example, this like leg would have it here and the other leg would move on this direction. So now you, you have that um, crossing over to like exaggerate. So even if you can't physically do the thing, it's really helpful to look for tutorials um, on how to, to do that. Like for example, like how to do a slam dunk. Uh, there, there's probably like a step-by-step -step guide, like step one, you do this, step two, you do this. And even if physically you can't jump that high, at least you know the theory, you know the concept. But if you can physically do the thing, I would recommend you to actually like try it, but you need to also be careful, right? Uh, because uh, if you're not an expert on uh, like these things and you like do it, uh, there may be some like accidents. So you need to be like, you need to be careful uh, and you need to like decide for yourself if this is something that is safe to try. So next is the rough, uh, rough animation. And I'm going to show you uh, Anna's uh, animate file. So uh, this is the, the animate file. This is the rough animation. And I'm just going to scrub through the timeline. So this is the rough. And this is the amount of uh, layers. So it's quite a lot. So now uh, about the layers. So um, this one depends on the animator, right? If I'm the one who would animate this for the rough animation, I usually just want fewer layers. So I think I could like make the roughs for this one with just uh, three layers. Um, but Anna would like to like really like organize um, the, uh, the layers, like the upper arm, lower arm, the, the body, the pelvis, the head, in like separate layers. So this one would boil down to, to preference. So it's my preference to have like fewer layers and it's Anna's preference to have them uh, organized. So next I'm going to show you like the initial uh, versions of her animation and my feedback uh, on those version and how it, it changed. So this is now the, uh, the first version. And this one applies like the tutorial, right? That um, think about you are walking in a straight line. And Anna did this um, perspective guide, right? Because uh, like when you're walking like uh, in like front view, right? Uh, if you have like the same like level, uh, it's really like hard to convey the, the front foot to the back uh, foot. Right, so and because of perspective, 
right? There's this, um, like the farther away it is, you know, the, the, the front foot and the back foot are not like on the same like level when you walk. And so uh, this one now like served as a guide. This line would be where the front foot would land. And this line at here would be like, where the back foot would be last before it's going to be um, lifted up, right? So these are like her guides. And the next step is to do the in-betweens. This one has like more in-betweens. And this one is with like the hand movements. One of my comments here is that the like action is a bit stiff. I wanted to exaggerate like the foot movements so that the hips would also um, move. I want the, the animation to be like more dynamic. And also, um, as you can see here, the, the model um, changed, right? If you look at um, her initial like model of the legs, in the next version, it changes. This is related to... Uh, my comment uh, with Meg about like the chest looking a bit flat. And for here, um, my comment was that the legs look a bit flat. And while uh, the chest and the pelvis, uh, they are 3D, they look like they are cube-like. It lacks uh, what I have like mentioned earlier, like in the, in the chest. It's not really like straight down, right? It's like it's a bit slanted uh, forward, and it's what is lacking here. And also, when uh, for example, like I move my my arm, uh, I move it um, like that. You'll see that um, this part of like my the upper arm it goes through the camera. Right, and that's also the same way when you like a front walk cycle. The knee um, should feel like it's like moving towards the camera, but here it feels like the upper leg is like shrinking. It's shrinking and then growing back again. It doesn't feel like it's moving towards the camera. So uh, I made like I asked Anna to make uh, a few adjustments on her model. So. Her initial model was looking something like this. So you have here for the uh, like the hips and this one for the knee. And this one looks a bit flat. So I asked her, maybe it would help if you draw in more 3D shapes. So instead of this, I asked her to uh, have like the hips like a sphere and the legs into like a cylinder or a more cylindrical like approach and the knee would be in uh, a sphere into something like this. And this is the result. So, and also I didn't ask her to do this, but she added like a uh, more shape on the chest part to have that, um, so that it doesn't look flat. It has that forward slant. And now it looks uh, it looks better, and then she added the um, arms. But my feedback for this is um, the movement isn't symmetrical, and also uh, the hand or the wrist isn't really in a like there's no arc, and it's more like a straight um, line. And that's one of the principles of animation, uh, especially like uh, the the human body that when we move we follow like a certain arc. And also the this like blue arm right here feels um, a bit short. So this is now the, the result and it feels like much better. And also another feedback that I gave Anna is for the, the, uh, the legs because it feels like they're just facing through. It's just like they're passing through like it doesn't have any volume. Like it just passed through like that so i ask anna to like account for the like the the physical volume of like the leg and this is the result i already like the uh like the arm movements but uh the legs are just a bit too much right i don't 
uh, right now it feels like it's moving like this. I didn't want uh, the animation to move like that, but just to account for like the volume that it's not like it's not like it's uh, like a ghost passing through that it has that volume. So it needs to have this like pose, right? But this one's too much, so I asked her to dial uh, dial it down. So it became like this. And also, I asked her to try to add delay to the arms, to the hand. And this is the result, but it feels a bit much, but the legs are already working for me. It's already good, right? It doesn't feel like it's just uh, the legs are like ghosts that they're just passing through each other. Um, there's already like, I could now feel like the volume of the legs. Um, but the arms, although I'm the one who asked this, it just feels too much. I mean, who, who walks who walks like that, right? So I asked Anna to um, to use the, the original version. And now this is the, uh, the result. So the next in the process is the the tie down. So basically a tie down is a, a cleaner version of the sketch. So uh, this is now the the tie down, right? So it looks it very much looks uh, similar to the design now whereas the rough is just like a, a rough. Right? So this is the rough, doesn't have any details. Um, the form is is like the design, but it's not complete, right? So this is now the tie down, like the details are already there. And the reason why we do this, you might be asking, uh, why did we do the roughs, right? Why don't we just go directly to the tie downs? Doesn't that save time? And I already have like discussed this um, in like past uh, tutorials that sometimes or most of the times especially in frame by frame animation the longest way is the fastest way and to emphasize that point um i think this is like a good opportunity because i i was able to show you the different like versions right like imagine if anna did the tie downs at the very start imagine that this is like like very cleaned up and it, it looks very polished and then i would say change this, change that, right? It's like very hard because in your mind, that's already perfect, that's already complete. And when you animate with perfection in mind, chances are your movements are gonna look stiff, right? But if it's just a sketch, there's no like emotional attachment to this yet. If you're gonna change it, it's okay. It's still just a sketch. It's just like lines and shapes. I could just like delete this, replace this, or however you want. And that's really like the uh, purpose uh, why we do it with uh, roughs first, because we, we're, we're just trying to nail down the movement, right? And once that is approved, that would be the time that, okay, this is now approved. We're now going to uh, do like the uh, cleaner version of the sketch. And now that is the uh, tie down. So this is the tie downs, and I'm just going to preview this, and uh, that's the, the result. So next, what we're gonna do is the clean up. So I'm going to show you the usual way. So uh, what's the usual way of uh, cleaning up the tie downs, and then I'm gonna show you the After Effects way, which we will use the path animation to do the clean up. So now uh, the usual way. Normally when I'm going to like clean up a drawing, so I'm just gonna turn on like the outline mode, which is you click this button and it's going to uh, convert the layers, all of the layers to outline mode. And then I'm going to create a new layer here on top. And I'm not anymore gonna clean up like the like whole thing because that's going to consume a lot of, of time. So I'm just gonna like demonstrate how I'm gonna clean up like, for example, like the head. So I use the paint brush tool, which is the shortcut is Y. And then I'm uh, I'm not gonna like make this like super perfect, right? Um, 
But I'm just gonna like show you how I would do it. I'm not anymore going to make this like very clean. And like once that is like done, I'm gonna press K on my keyboard. That's the uh, paint bucket tool and then choose like the color. And I usually have like the, the final file and then um, just, I, I know the, the hex code. So I'm just gonna copy the hex code and then paste it here. Um, but I'm just gonna like choose like a random color uh, similar to, to the design, um, maybe something like this. And then um, color that. And then after I'm going to select the whole thing. Oh, uh, before that, uh, because we have like layers below um, below this, right? And I'm just gonna like select everything and then lock it. So now I'm going to select the clean up like drawing and then just click the like outline and then click this like empty, right? And uh, now I have like this shape and then just do that for like the rest of like the, the body parts. And if you have like tried cleaning up like a uh, frame by frame in a frame by frame workflow, you know that it's very like tedious. It's like, um, it takes like time and you also need to be very accurate when, when you draw uh, to make sure that you have like the correct uh, shape. Um, but how do we do that in, in After Effects? Um, so I'm gonna open After Effects. So now I have opened an After Effects project. So I'm just gonna like open a, or create a new comp. And since we're using 24 uh, FPS for our frame by frame animation, I'm just gonna change this to 24 so that our frame by frame animation and our After Effects are like, uh, they match. And then what I will do is import the SWF file. So this is the SWF of the cleanup. So I'm just gonna drag it and import it to uh, the After Effects. And then I'm just gonna bring it like here and we have like uh, this one and I'm gonna like zoom in. And uh, for example, we're gonna clean up uh, the, the face. Uh, so I'm just gonna press T on my keyboard and then reduce the opacity, something like that. And then I'm gonna click this like pen tool and then I'm going to change the stroke and then uh, click this like empty so that we won't have a stroke, only the fill and for the fill color, um, this needs to be exact, right? Uh, this needs to be like the correct hex code from the design, but just for the sake of demonstration, I'm just gonna like choose any color. And now uh, we are going to clean this up. So we're using the, the points and I'm not like making this super accurate because so that uh, it's just like quick to demonstrate. But if this is really like a project or we're like cleaning this up, it would like take much longer. So now we have something like this and then the pivot or the anchor point, let's just bring this here, the center. And then uh, what we do is we're gonna re like repeat the process for like every of the, the body parts. So let's just imagine that we have completed everything. So how do we animate like the, the path? Like uh, let me create like for example, the lower leg. Um, it was like dark blue, right? So I'm just not gonna use like the exact color just for the sake of demonstration so that I don't need to, to open it again, right? Uh, and now I'm going to like clean this up. And I have now this shape. And for the anchor point, the anchor point is right here. I'm gonna bring it to uh, this area so that when we would like rotate it, it's going to be like that, right? And to animate the path, how we are going to use this technique for the cleanup, um, we're gonna like keyframe like the path. So to find the path, you could either like expand uh, the properties until you find the path or you could press 
u twice. And then we have it here, path. Click that and we have a keyframe of that. And then I'm gonna move forward in time. For example, something like this one. And now I'm going to like adjust the path and it automatically like create a keyframe. And what's good about this and what I think this is much quicker than the usual way is because I only need to adjust the points and not recreate the drawing. So now that's the, the result. So when, um, like when you do the cleanup in After Effects, you're using the pen tool, right? And you are like placing like points. So how many like points do you make? Um, my answer to that question is it should be the minimum, not the maximum that you could like put in there. Um, the reason is that when you animate like the path of the shape and there are like a lot of points, then you need to move those points one by one, right? But if you also are lacking points, then there are certain shapes that you couldn't achieve. So what you need is the minimum, right? The minimum that you could draw the shapes. So um, the lesser the points, the better. But also be careful because if you lack points, there are shapes that you couldn't make anymore. So let's take a look back at the design. And you'll see here that there are like some parts that have a stroke, right? Um, this part right here, there's like a stroke. The design that we used is that when, um, when like the left and right feels like they are merged together because if you look here, they are the same color, right? And if we're, we're gonna remove the outline, uh, we can't anymore distinguish the left from the right. Like, is it the left leg that's on front or the right leg that's on front? And that's the reason why we have um, this outline right here. But the outline would, would like disappear. Like for example, we have the, uh, the leg um, that is like separate from the other leg. So the the outline would like disappear. It would only show if you can't distinguish like the body parts, right? So how do we do that in, in After Effects? How do you do that in like the, the, the path? So let's go back to, to After Effects. And I'm just gonna delete this and our path, right? The path that, uh, or or the part where there's an outline is like the upper leg in the design. So let me just create uh, a path for the upper leg. So now we have this one. Um, and uh, what you could do is create an outline, right? Create a, a stroke and we have now the stroke, but it's the whole thing. One way, or you might think, okay, I'm just gonna like remove the fill and then create a stroke um, like this because that was like in the design, right? And just add a taper, right? To, to uh, find the taper, you need to expand your layer, go into your properties, go to contents, go to shape, then go to stroke. And if you scroll down, there's taper right here. And then you could like adjust the start length and the end length. And you have something like this, which resembles the design. But the problem with this is that you need to animate this, right? So what you could do so that you don't have to like create the points, create a different shape, you can just duplicate this. And then for the duplicate, so this is the duplicate, right? I'm going to remove like the fill and then um, add a stroke. So now I have this on top and the fill at the bottom. And now let's taper this one. So I'm gonna expand this until we go, we uh, find the stroke, expand taper and for the start length and end length, make it 100. So I have something like this, but this is still not what we want, right? Because the stroke, is only up to this point. So what you can do is add a trim path. So we're gonna trim the path. 
So here on the add, click this and then add a trim path. Now for the trim path, now you could like animate or adjust like the offset of this or the, the start to something like that. And maybe adjust the end. And you'll see here, that's the stroke. Or let me change this to bread so that uh, it's much clearer for you, right? So the original, uh, the starting, this is like the, uh, the original, right? So we are like adjusting the trim path so that the stroke would only be here. So now when we animate this, so I'm just gonna animate this real quick. So I'm, go I'm gonna press Y on my keyboard and bring the anchor point to around here, right? And then I'm gonna press U twice to find the path and create a keyframe. Uh, move forward in time and uh, maybe this frame. And I'm just gonna now adjust. So I pressed V on my keyboard and double click this. And then I'm just gonna adjust the path do something like that, right? And uh, you may be wondering, oh, so I need to animate this twice, right? But remember that the path of this is a duplicate of the one below, right? So what, what we need is to somehow like parent the path so that any changes we made at the, like the master path, the one that's parented, uh, the one that's parenting through the uh, master path would change whenever the master path changes. So how do we do that, right? So this one, this one here, we need to go to the path. So I, I, I could click U twice, and then I'm going to hold the option key. Uh, if you're using on a Mac, that's the option key. If you're using a Windows computer, that's the Alt key. While holding that, click the stopwatch uh, button, and that's going to like add an expression, right? And now for the this one, this is the pick whip. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna find the uh, path. But since if you look here, see it's like there's already like a lot of like properties and it's hard to locate. What I'm gonna do is just create a keyframe for this, right? And then I'm gonna press you on my keyboard because that's the shortcut to hide everything. And then I'm going to press you again. And that's only going to show the keyframe, right? So now it makes uh, the UI like more arranged. And then I could expand this one because that's the expression. And now for the pick whip, I'm just gonna pick whip it to the path of the one below, right? And then whatever the path of the one it's connected to, it's also going to change, right? So now I'm gonna move forward in time. You'll see that this one here changes, animate, right? So uh, that's the technique for doing the stroke. So there are uh, two ways to approach uh, easing when doing path uh, animation. The first way is to interpolate and the second way is to do it uh, frame by frame. So uh, I'm, I'm going to demonstrate the uh, first one, uh, the interpolate. I'm going to explain uh, what interpolation means. So let's go back to uh, after, after Effects. So uh, I'm just gonna like change the background to black and then uh, I'm just gonna uh, cre create a circle And I'm gonna bring the anchor point to the center right here. And I'm just going to, to animate. Uh, I'm just gonna press P on my keyboard, create a keyframe and then move forward in time, uh, maybe here, 12 frames, uh, and then uh, move it here. So basically this way is to interpolate. Uh, this is um, like you are, uh, letting After Effects do the in-betweening for you. And if you're gonna click uh, that object, you'll see here this small dots. And that is the frame. So this is like 12 frames. And if you count this, this is, this is going to be 12 frames. 
And now if I'm gonna select like my keyframes and then press F9, because that's easy ease, you'll notice that the dots have rearranged themselves, right? Because now we have easing, we have easing like in this. And if I'm gonna click the keyframe and then I'm going to uh, go to my um, speed graph and adjust like, uh, adjust this one, Uh, you'll notice that like the dots have rearranged themselves and this is the result. I'm just gonna pr press space bar and that's the, uh, that's the result. So that's basically uh, the interpolate uh, method. Uh, the second way is to do it frame by frame. So I'm gonna show you like the, uh, how to do it frame by frame. So I'm going to, uh, I'm going to open uh, Adobe Animate. And now I'm going to just draw a circle. And now I'm gonna like skip a frame because we are animating on twos and I'm going to press F7 and I'm gonna turn on the onion skin. And basically what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to decelerate. So it starts off fast, right? Uh, take note of this like distance right here. And then I'm gonna skip a frame because we're animating on twos and press F7. And I'm going to extend uh, the onion skin so that I'll see like the spacing. Basically, I'm doing the in-between like manually, right? And I'm taking note of like the spacing that this one here is, the spacing is getting smaller and smaller, right? For example, this one, for example, this animation. So this one was done frame by frame. So now I'm going to demonstrate how you can like animate frame by frame in After Effects. So frame by frame doesn't really mean that you have to draw it. It just means that you are animating it frame by frame. So let me show you how to do that in After Effects. So basically this is the animation that we did, right? The one I did before. Now let's uh, import uh, the animation that we did in Adobe Animate. So let's import the SWF file. So this is now the SWF file. And uh, this one is black, so I'm just gonna toggle this one. And what it means is to do it frame by frame, right? So let, let me show you that uh, we could also like just interpolate this, right? Something like that. And then uh, I'm just gonna press N on my keyboard so that the preview is only until here and then press uh, space bar. And you'll notice that the timing of the interpolated version is different than the one I did frame by frame. But basically both of them are slowing down, right? I can adjust like the speed graph of this to match the one frame by frame, but it's not really matching exactly, right? So the other way to do this is to just remove the easing. So I'm selecting this one, and then I'm going to hold the command key because I'm working on a Mac computer, but if you're working on a Windows computer, that's the control key. While holding that key, click the keyframe. That's going to remove the easing. So now it has no easing. So instead of like um, interpolating, we do this frame by frame. So remember we animated on twos, so skip a frame. And then now here, I'm going to manually keyframe this. Skip a frame and then manually keyframe this so that it exactly matches the one that I did in Adobe Animate. So now they are exactly matched. Let's have a look. Now let's hide the SWF. And this is now using the, the uh, frame by frame method. It's still being interpolated though, because we are skipping a frame, right? In the uh, animate, we like animated on twos, but in the After Effects, we are animating uh, 24 FPS and we're skipping a frame. So from here to here, the in-between is like being interpolated, right? I still consider this as uh, frame by frame. 
And basically, if you look at this, it seems like that the animation doesn't have like an easing to it, but the easing is already done manually. Even this one, this one has easing, right? It's just that we like did the easing manually. We manually like keyframed it to where we want it uh, to be um, compared with the like interpolation method where we pressed F9 and uh, did the speed graph. So in path animation, it's like also uh, this, the same. So now uh, going back here, it's also the same um, that we can like, one way to do this is just to let AE interpolate the in-betweens or to do this frame by frame. Like you're skipping a frame here and then let's keyframe the path of this adjust the path that it matches and then skip a frame because uh, uh, I, I think I did not mention this before but Anna animated on twos. Um, it was an animated on twos, the FPS is 24. So technically it feels like it's running on 12 FPS, right? So uh, we Anna animated on twos for the, the animation. So if you are going to like do this frame by frame, you skip a frame and then keyframe, right? So I'm not anymore gonna finish this because it's gonna like take a, a longer amount of time, but basically that's the, the idea, right? It's still being interpolated for the frames that uh, we didn't already do in Adobe Animate because we were skipping a frame, but for those that are already present in the uh, Adobe Animate version, we are like keyframing that frame by frame. So next, I'm going to discuss the strategies on uh, how you could animate uh, the path of like the, the shape or how to do the, the path animation um, technique. So there are really like three properties that you could animate and that's um, position, the rotation, and the path. And the way I do things or the way when I approach um, like path animation, I start first with matching the position because sometimes the animation like, uh, like for example, the arm or like you move the arm, the position of the arm like changes. The second that I like animate is the rotation. Like for example, the arm, right? right it rotates. The third one is the path because um, the human body has like an irregular shape, right? Like it could be in, in different angles and as, uh, different angle as we like move like in, in different angles, the shape changes, right? That's where I'm going to like change the path of that shape. So I start first with the position, then the rotation, and then the path. So now let me show you. So let's uh, take, for example, we are going to do like the lower leg of this. So let me again repeat uh, the process, let me like create like the shape. So for example, this one, and the reason why we put the anchor point to around right here, because if ever we're gonna need like the rotation, it's on the right place. Okay, so I'm gonna press P on my keyboard because that's the position, I'm gonna like create a keyframe. And then I'm gonna press R on my keyboard because that's the rotation. And I'm gonna press U twice so that I could locate the path and I'm just gonna create a, a keyframe and then I'm gonna press U to hide everything and then U again to show only the keyframes. And now I'm going to like skip a frame and then here I'm going to see if we need like uh, to change the position and maybe change the rotation of this and then I'm gonna double click and then change the path because the form has changed and then skip a frame again. And now the position slightly changes. So I'm gonna change the position, try to match it here. And the rotation slightly changes as well. So I'm gonna rotate this a bit. And for the path, it also like adjusted a bit. So I'm just gonna change this. Or you could also like put the, because, uh, this one is blocking my guide, right? So we can just place the SWF uh, on top 
right like write that so so that uh, I could see it and it's black and it's like hard to see so we could add like a fill effect so on the effects and presets uh, panel right here I'm gonna type fill and double click that so now it has like a fill with red color so now it's much clearer and I'm just gonna lock it so that I don't accidentally click on it now I'm gonna skip a frame and right here now you could see and we uh, you could see clearly the guide and I could just adjust this rotate this a bit and then the shape and match the shape so now I'm just gonna time lapse this So just to note, you don't want to have like an empty keyframes because After Effects is going to interpolate that if there's like an empty like keyframe. So even if, for example, if the rotation didn't change, for example, you still want to like click this one so that it's keyframe, right? So that it won't be interpolated in like in the next uh, frame. So now this is the, the result. So it, it, it looks like that. Uh, let me just bring the like end point around here. I'm gonna press N on my keyboard. And now uh, it, it looks like that. How about we try the dress, right? So not all the time that you need the like rotation, position and rotation, but it's there just to, to help you. Because uh, imagine that if we don't do the rotation and it's so far away, like for example, for example, this is, so I'm just gonna like duplicate this one and hide the one below, right? And I'm gonna press you on my keyboard. I'm going to delete all like other keyframes. Let's just for say, for example, that the next frame is right here, right? It's not practical to change like the path and like move it like that and until you you get to the like right um position right it's like very complicated it's much easier to just animate the uh position and then the rotation and then just adjust the path to match like the the, the drawing the drawing that we did in adobe animate so that that is like the much like easier way to animate Right, so I'm, I'm going to delete this now and show this again. But not all the time, especially if like the movement doesn't have like changes in the position, you don't really need to animate the position. So for example, um, this top, uh, the top, uh, I'm just gonna choose like a, a different color and uh, let me just uh, create or like do the path of this. I'm just gonna do this real quick. So for example, this one, uh, I'm just gonna bring the like anchor point to the center or maybe at the bottom. And even though I feel like I'm not gonna need the position and rotation, I'm just gonna keyframe the position and also the rotation. And then I'm going to press U twice and then click the path of the shape, press U, and then U again to just re only reveal the keyframes. And now I'm just gonna bring this to below the guide so that we don't like block the guide. And then like I'm going to like move a frame and then adjust like the path. So now I don't think we need to animate the position, just like the path of this. So now we have like that animation. And then uh, again, we need to keyframe this even though we did not um, change anything. So I'm not anymore going to finish this one, but as you can see, like it's much easier to, to animate uh, or to like clean this up compared to doing this in Adobe Animate and then drawing every frame again and again. Here, we're just like adjusting uh, the points and this is the, the, the result. And I'm not anymore going to finish this as it's gonna like take time. I'm just going to show you Anna's file. 
So this is now the result of the path animation. But uh, as you can see here, there's really like a lot of layers. Uh, and you know, there's uh, a different path for the, the arm. And now this is the result. So I'm just gonna press space bar on my keyboard. Now that's the result. And again, this is using the one that we did in Adobe Animate as a guide. And then we use like the shape layers to like achieve this kind of look, this kind of, of animation. But there's also another thing that you need to consider because like for example, this leg or this leg, it's going to change its, um, for example here, uh, it's still at the front, right? But at some point it's going to go at the back. So you need to like switch that one so for example, uh, this one, for example, this uh, layer, the one inside is, is the, the path. So uh, Anna already like grouped some things together and pre-comped it. But basically the technique uh, that Anna used is the one that I have showed you. So for example, this one, uh, this layer. So I'm just gonna click this solo mode so that you could see. This one is at the back, but at some point it's going to disappear because that's going to appear at the front. So we have, now this layer, this one, this is um, the front. So it it switched, right? So uh, I'm just gonna uh, unclick this one and uh, this one. Let's bring like uh, the, the whole thing again. So now this layer, right? Here, it like disappeared at this point. So the, op the opacity of this is change to zero. So I'm just going to click the solo mode again. So it disappears because we intended that to appear on front. This will be our switch, right? So it switch. There's some switching that is happening here. Another thing that I want to discuss is to do some sort of like fixes or patches. So you don't really need uh, like for example, the arm layer, if you like change like the shape of that, it doesn't really need to be that specific layer because the pers the mindset of this is similar to a frame by frame approach. Like it doesn't matter like um, if this specific layer is animating in that way, what matters is what it looks like on the screen. So for example, for example, uh, what if we want to change like the shape of the neck, right? One way to do that is to animate the shape of the neck, right? The, the path, so this is the neck. I'm gonna press U, we have the path, the keyframe of the path, we could change the path. Or we could like create like corrections on top. We're, we can create like a new, like for example, I'm just gonna click the eyedropper tool and change it to this. And then we could just create a shape and overlap that and then just like have it appear on that specific frame where you just want to do the fix. So I'm gonna like click the open bracket on my keyboard and then like for example, or, or the frame started here, I think. And then here, I'm just gonna uh, hold the option key and then the close bracket. Uh, if you're working on a Windows, that would be the alt key and the close bracket. And then adjust this one. So we effectively like adjusted, or uh, I'm, I'm just gonna like do the fix. So in a way, we ju just adjusted this specific frame, right? So although this is wrong, but uh, I mean, the, the, the shape of the neck is, is wrong, but the point I'm trying to make is that you can do this. This is like one technique to uh, to do some like quick fixes. So that's what Anna did with this like patch joint and patch left arm, because there are some patches that she needs to, to do, like to correct certain frames. So the beauty of cleaning up in uh, After Effects and doing the path animation is that you can adjust the timing. So I have created a new comp and this is the comp with the animation. So I'm just gonna bring it here. 
And this one has its own timing, right? So it's only up to this point. So I'm gonna press N on my keyboard. And then we have something like that, right? But we could also like adjust the timing. We could time remap this. So the shortcut for time remap is command uh, option T if you're working on a Mac, that's control alt T if you're working in a Windows. So now this is um, like the time remap. And then I'm gonna add a keyframe here and let's extend uh, this preview. And then I'm going to drag this one. Since remember, even though we um, animated this frame by frame, we animated the path frame by frame, this is still After Effects. And those in-betweens are being interpolated. So we don't really need to like create like new frames if we want like to have this like walk in slow motion. So that's the, the beauty of, of this. I could adjust the timing. So for example, if it, it was too quick and just adjust it to make it a bit slower. So now it's, it's like this. And it's very smooth. And that's like one uh, style if you want. But if you want it to be back on twos, you could create an adjustment layer on top and apply posterize time. So you could go here in the effects and presets uh, panel and then type posterize time. And then I'm gonna change the frame rate to 12. Now I'm gonna press space on my keyboard and preview this. And then now it's gonna look like uh, it was done frame by frame. It's like it's being animated on twos. So even if we're gonna like extend this and like um, make a slow motion, now it's like it's done uh, frame by frame. So what should we use? Uh, is it better to do the usual way to do the cleanup uh, in frame by frame, like to actually draw it? or um, the path animation way. So uh, to answer that question, let's discuss the pros and cons uh, of like both method. So the cons of this is that when you do the cleanup, you're going to draw frame by frame. And if you're very comfortable with drawing, then this is probably like a more suitable uh, process uh, for you. But if, you're not that good or um, most animators are good at drawing, but if you're not like that precise when you draw, then the path animation way uh, could be better or could be faster. In my opinion, or at least for me, uh, I like I, I timed myself and I'm faster when I'm doing it the uh, After Effects way compared to um, doing it uh, the usual way. And also the other cons of the usual way is if in the future you're going to like um, adjust the timing, like for example, um, you want this to be like slower. So you end up like adding like a frame. So I'm just gonna uh, press like F5, then F5 again, but you still need to do the in-between, right? So meaning you need to create the drawing of that. Like even if, uh, even if like the solution is like very simple, so I'm gonna uh, unclick the, the unlock. Like for example, with this one, I still need to draw like the in-between of this one, right? And with the After Effects method, with the path animation method, if you adjust the timing, you don't need to draw again. You don't even need to set it up again. It's automatically interpolated by After Effects. So that's like the uh, one cons of uh, using like the, the usual way. But um, when it comes to like very complex movement, um, for example, there's a lot of like body turn, for example, or like head turn that you could see the, the back. It now becomes very complex to do that in After Effects, right? Like if I just like try to imagine like the, the layers or like my strategy on how to do that. Um, like for example, this one, I have like one shape in After Effects for this part, but for the back part here, that would be like another like shape, right? And sometimes it's just too much of a hassle, but with like drawing, you've got no problem 
with that. You could just simply draw. So whenever the animation involves like a lot of like body turns or head turns, then I'm not gonna do the path animation um, technique. I'm gonna do it the usual way. But if the head turn is only from here to here and not like a, a full like 360, a full 360 head turn, then I'm gonna do that in path animation. Like for example, this one, this is one shape and that's easy enough like to manipulate the shapes to make it look like this. The, the, the other side. So if that's the case, I'm still going to do um, uh, the path animation technique. So next, I'm going to discuss, um, can we skip uh, the tie downs, right? So um, when I was like earlier on in my career, I have like the urge to, to skip the steps. Right, so um, now we have we identified that the roughs is really important to get the animation, but how about the tie downs, right? Um, can we cut the tie downs and go directly to path animation? So uh, let me just show you. So you're telling me that you want to jump from this to this. I'm just gonna say <laughs> good luck with that, right? Um, it's very difficult because um, you don't know like the proper position of the eyes. You don't know the proper position of the the other um, other like body parts. So a tie down because remember that when I did the demonstration a while ago, I used the tie down and it was like really like easy to create the shapes of that. But if I only have the rough and go directly to After Effects and then do the shapes, then it's very like hard because what I have is not the complete version. So again, um, the uh, principles still stand that um, sometimes the longest path, like the longest process is the fastest, right? If you try to skip, you'll realize that you really need those steps. So uh, that's it. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you learned something today. I hope that even if you don't intend to use path animation, I hope you are able to get ideas to um, somehow improve your current workflow. So if you want to get the project files of this, uh, the, the files that um, Meg did and Anna did, uh, uh, their files, it's available on Patreon, and I will put the link in the description uh, just in case uh, you want to join our Patreon and uh, download uh, the files. Our Patreon is uh, $5 a month, and like all of the project files that I've posted in the past are hosted on Patreon. So uh, that's it. I hope you liked uh, this video. If uh, you did like it, please give us a thumbs up. And subscribe if you like uh, to learn animation, if you like content like this, or if you like my teaching style, so please uh, subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video.